Welcome to the Coach's Corner. Now in its 32nd season on Beaver County Radio, the Coach's Corner provides an in-depth preview into the coaching philosophies and mindsets of Beaver County's Gridiron Generals as their teams prepare for Friday Night Football in 2020. Coach's Corner is presented by CCBC, Junction Auto Service, Ambridge Italian Villa, the Beer Falls Municipal Authority, GNU's Body Works, and Gazzetti Optometric Services. Now we take you live to the Beaver County Radio Studios for tonight's broadcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Coach's Corner here on Beaver County Radio. 1230 WBVP, 1460 WMBA, and 99.3 FM, presented by St. Barnabas. want to thank Tom Hayes for anchoring last week, along with Jason Colangelo. Joe Grieco was the guest coach, head coach of New Brighton. Now we have his counterpart tonight, yeah. Mr. Hayes, and Nick Nardone. It should be a well, good show. Nick needs to know. We didn't jinx Coach Grieco. <laughs> they won last Friday night, so uh, just because you're here tonight, that's not a bad omen. Nick. should be a good omen, actually. Yeah, hopefully. There you go. And we want to welcome uh, Malik Garrett, Curtis Walsh, and uh, we have a, one of our players of the game. In fact, the first one to come this year, Zach Hours, mm -hmm. only a sophomore for the Blackhawk Cougars. And he's going to be joining us in the second half of tonight's show here at the studio here on 7th Avenue in Beaver Falls. Tom, um, this, is, this is a week that I think we've been looking forward to for some time. New Brighton, Beaver Falls, both 3-0. and your game on WNBA, Our Lady the Sacred Heart at Rochester. I think maybe Rochester, I mean, it's good to see they're off to a 3-0 and start. Maybe the, the, maybe the word's still out on them because they, they probably haven't beaten that signature team yet. Well, if they can beat the well, Chargers yeah, they'll be Friday challenged. night, they'll, they'll, they're in the mix. Yeah, and what, a, what a job Dan Bradley's done at Old Spaw, uh, Our Lady the Sacred Heart. <laughs> former head coach at Ambridge, and, of course, Gene, Matt, Gene Matz, up the Hall of Famer. Uh, should be a great, great football game. Looking forward to going to Rochester State, and we always uh, appreciate their hospitality. Is always looking forward to see Jack Sullivan and the guys in the press box, uh, along with Gene Matz and his staff, and it'll be a good test. I think, it, I think really it's a big test for both teams, actually. Well, Tom, um, seems like often – stories break. A couple weeks ago you, you broke the story on the station about Greg Tony uh, leaving Freedom and now uh, there's more news. <laughs> yeah, we're, gonna, <clears throat> we're losing another coach, Bob. Uh, congratulations to Jeff Belts. Jeff Belts, the head football coach at Beaver, has just been hired as the assistant superintendent for Moon Area School District. So what a great job that is for Jeff. Jeff has always had a goal of moving up in, in administration. So this is a, this is a career goal of Jeff's. I know he's going to miss coaching football. Uh, we conversed a little bit today via text, so uh, you know, he's going to miss being on the sidelines, but certainly we wish him well in his new endeavors, and we thank Jeff Belts for his cooperation for 21 years as the head coach of the uh, Beaver Bobcats. Uh, and he did it with class. You know, that was the one, one thing I can really say about Jeff Belts, class individual. Oh, certainly so. And he was our um, initial guest of, of, of the season. And uh, maybe at that time... Yeah, it was, good thing we nailed him while I, we did, huh? I know. I, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, not that we couldn't get him on later on, but, uh, but for Beaver, though, uh, congratulations, Jeff Belts, uh, for, for his promotion in academics. But Nick Nardone, hard to believe, fourth year now <laughs> at Beaver Falls. <laughs> um, Ryan Matsuk, uh, you were the defensive coordinator, right? Mm -hmm. On the team that won the state championship yeah. in 2016. Were you a little surprised that Ryan, or was this kind of like he was thinking along? And I know he's been speaking of Jeff Belts. Ryan has moved up in the academic yeah, climate. Yeah, yeah. He's the assistant principal and he's the athletic director at Western Beaver. Did you have any inclination that he was going to step aside, or was it a, a sort of a surprise to you when it happened? I mean, Ryan, Ryan was always open and honest with us, and we knew 
um, especially after the, the championship season ended, around winter time, that he was getting some schools were interested in him. And some schools had contacted him about different spots in administration. And, and kind of like you guys mentioned, Jeff has always aspired to move up in administration. Ryan, uh, we knew, uh, had always wanted to be a principal um, and athletic director on top of that, I can't, I think was kind of like icing on the cake for, uh, cause just his, uh, athletic background and stuff. So when Western Beaver came to him with, with that dual position and, and gave him that opportunity, he really, I know talk just to having conversations with him, he, he couldn't turn it down. They made it too good of an offer for him. And, um, but yeah, he was always up front with us and we knew the whole time that, like I said, some schools were fishing for him and trying to get him, and when that offer came, he, he let us know that it was going to be the end for him. And lo and behold, he's now the head football right. coach at Western Beaver as well. So well, we tell him he had that. Ryan about we that? tell him he had that plan the whole time. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. Ryan always Ryan's always two or three steps ahead now. He, <laughs> um, but uh, I I mean he he always wants to see wherever he's at. He wants to see his program and, and that team or that school do well. So sure. when when things kind of the situation happens last year where his coach kind of had to step back I mean Ryan's that kind of guy where he's going to step in and he's going to make sure that the program doesn't take a step back itself because I mean he cares so um, yeah it was funny we'd give him a hard time and say he knew what was going on the whole time but no nah, he uh, he's going to make sure like I said wherever he's at whatever job he's doing he, he he's going to make sure his programs are successful well Nick uh, our broadcast partner Bruce Fry alerted me and uh, I'm sure I would have figured it out sooner or later but he beat me to the pulp mm -hmm. and when what one of your big wins that year second uh, to winning the state championship was beating Al Equipa in the WPIL mm -hmm. final yeah. and Mike Schmianic was the head coach at Al Equipa of course Ryan Matzuk the head mm -hmm. coach who would have ever thought in a million years that the next time they would oppose each other on a football field would be a Saturday <laughs> afternoon at industry, seat LaSalle against Western Beach. Is that this week? That is oh, this week. Man, yeah. and, and that's a broadcast game, by the way, 12 p.m. airtime <laughs> on Beaver County Radio. We'll have your game Friday yeah. night. Uh, um, Nick, uh, um, let's talk about your club first of all and uh, what what a season it's been mm -hmm. i mean you're number one ranked i don't know how much that means to you i'm sure it does somewhat but i don't know if you're one of those coaches who would like to kind of be under the radar mm -hmm. but <laughs> tell us your thoughts you're, you're you've been ranked number one since the beginning of the year and you've really done nothing uh, to change yeah. that in the first three games i mean it's like you said, you kind of you don't want to be out there and have everybody like know you're number one, and you want your kids to stay humble and stuff like that. But at the same point, I feel like it helps us uh, just kind of stay on our toes because we know being a number one ranked team, you're getting everybody's best shot every week. You know, what I mean, everybody wants to knock off the number one team, so it doesn't matter who we play week in and week out. They're giving us their best game because they want to be the team that knocked off the number one team. And we saw that last week with Elwood, and we saw it the week before with Laurel. I mean, those teams played us tough. I mean, in the end, we were able to figure out what we needed to do, make adjustments to what the teams were, were throwing at us, and we were able to, to win both games pretty, pretty handily. But, I mean, you're getting that, that punch every time they're coming after you because they want to be the team that knocked off that team. So we have to, in our preparation, make sure that we know and our kids prepare that they're going to get everybody's best shot, so they better make sure they're ready because teams want to be there to be the team that beat us. Coach, of course, you were in Triple A last year. Mm -hmm. Now you're in Double A. What were your What was your initial thinking when you found out when you realized that you were going to drop down into Double A? You left a very tough section with Central Valley and Aliquip and Triple A, and uh, now both you and the Quips are out of that division. Now you're in Double A. Uh, what was the thinking, the mentality going into this season when you knew you'd be playing Double A? I mean, honestly, the very first thing that came to mind was thank God we don't have to travel anymore. I mean, we went from going to South Park and Waynesburg, Waynesburg and yeah. Uniontown, <laughs> two-hour bus rides yeah. to our furthest trips to Shan or uh, uh, Mohawk this week. We got a half or this year, so uh, we were happy that the traveling was down because it was it was tough in in a sense that I mean, especially for our home games. When we got teams, like I said, like Uniontown and South Park coming in, a lot of our fans don't even know where those places right. are or really care. But when you got New Brighton coming and you got Freedom coming and Riverside coming, they get excited because they know those teams. And I think our kids are excited, too, to have the opportunity to play some of the teams that they've been playing going all the way up through. 
Um, but I mean, a lot of see a lot of places, and and you hear from people around just saying like, oh, well, you move down to Double A, it's easy, whatever. But I'll tell you, I mean, like I said, the last couple of weeks, you, you're getting teams that are playing yeah. very, very good football in Double A. So that that step down, yeah, maybe you got a few more kids on teams in Triple A, maybe a little bit more size up front. But other than that, the skill is there. It might even be more skilled uh, down in Double A, and, and and you're getting teams that can play football, especially when you're playing teams in Beaver County. No, yeah, that top to bottom of the map. Double A conference really could be as almost as strong as a Northwestern mm -hmm. six mm -hmm. uh, top to bottom. Maybe you know Central Valley might be up yeah, top yeah, above everyone, but but other than that, top to bottom, your your week in week out competition in Double A is pretty impressive in yeah. the math. And you do the, that is the kind of the disappointment though that you lost to Central Valley in the Aliquippa, especially like with COVID hitting. We were still supposed to play Aliquippa even though it wasn't <laughs> oh, conference. That's right, they right, were supposed right. to be our week one game, and we were supposed to play Blackhawk in week zero. Um, and, and those would have been really great rivalry games that we were able to keep going and, and again, to kind of show our kids and, and see our kids how do we test up against championship caliber right. teams at different levels. Um, so it was disappointing to lose those opportunities. Um, but like you said, I mean, this conference, I know just kind of from what I've heard and from the past, there really hasn't been one team that's been dominant. I mean, one year Mohawk wins it, then Freedom wins it, then the Shannock wins it. Then, you know what I mean, they're all neck and neck, week in and week out, uh, competing with each other. So we're, we're glad to get into, like you said, a competitive conference that's top to bottom. You got to show up every week. It makes our kids kind of stay focused and stay on their toes. Well, with Central Valley and Aliquippa going to, I mean, Central Valley stayed where it is. Aliquippa mm -hmm. was forced to move up because of the competition mm -hmm. formula, and you stepped down a notch to 2A. But you, you lose those rivalries, but you get the all-time number one rivalry right across the bridge in New Brighton, and, and you both come in at 3-0, and so that's a plus. You get to play uh, New Brighton, the little brown jug. I know it's been out there for a long time, but really you haven't had a, a real meaningful game against New Brighton for a while, and this will be your really your first as a head coach that has a lot on the line. This is not a non-conference game. Uh, if you win this one, you're in pretty good shape. I know we still have a few weeks yeah. left, but if you win, you would have beaten New Brighton and Laurel, and you haven't a chance to get home. Did you? Did you talk to uh, Amy Schuneman from the WPIL? You have three <laughs> nice home games right there, and, and, and that doesn't hurt. Uh, even though I know you don't have the number yeah. of fans you would like to, but still, New Brighton, Joe Greco, good program. They're oh, yeah. three and zero. Oh. And, I, and, and you know you have to play well to win on Friday night. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's, like I said, we got, we, we've been on our kids all week about the preparation because, I mean, you see them on film and you see the things they do. They kind of, they're similar to what we are. I mean, they got two big backs. We have two big backs. They got some skill. They got a quarterback that can throw the ball when they need to, and they got a good line. I mean, you look at each other and look at both teams, and there's a lot of similarities between the two teams. Um, so I, I think they're, and obviously, like I said, us being ranked number one and them right now being number two, at least in the conference, you're going to get their best shot. And it's going to it's going to be a game where we got to play good football, good sound football, mistake free football, because New Brighton's a good solid team for sure. Especially at three and zero, the kids got to look at that record and respect that. I mean, you're in a situation with only two teams from your conference qualifying yeah. for the playoffs. Uh, every game's so important. Do you sense that urgency more this year with only two teams going to the playoffs? Absolutely, and the fact that, like I said, the season's short. You don't have we didn't have those couple of weeks ahead of time where you got some exhibition games where you can kind of like learn some things, fix some mistakes. I mean, we were thrown into the fire and you're playing a conference game against Riverside, who at that time was kind of picked up in the top of the conference and it's time to go. I mean, every game is a playoff game, especially if you only got two teams going. So we treat them like playoff games. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the individual players for the Beaver Falls Fighting Tigers. We'll take this time out. We also want to thank Pizza Joe's. They have given us the pizza, Pizza Joe's and Beaver. Give them a call for delivery, 724-775-5655. Not only the pizza, but the subs and calzones. Check it out, 3rd Street in Beaver. Everyone goes to Pizza Joe's. We'll be back with more of this week's edition of the Coach's Corner. Guest coach Nick Nardone of Beaver Falls here on Beaver County Radio. Lots of things have changed this year, but taking care of your car isn't one of them. Junction Auto Repair reminds you, it's time to schedule your winter weather check. Brakes, tires, batteries, wiper blades, everything needs to be ready for winter's worst. Junction Auto has years of experience in general maintenance and makes solving your car's problems their priority. 
Stop in today at 425 Constitution Boulevard in New Brighton or call for an appointment at 724-775-2400. Keeping your car in great shape is one game you can always win at Junction Auto. How have you been? This is Jim Riggio from the Beaver Falls Municipal Authority, and I'm pleased to announce that it's game on. Just like football, the Beaver Falls Municipal Authority is moving forward to serve you better in honor of our 80th anniversary. But that's nothing new. Every day is game on. As we strive to sustain and build up the community, the Beaver Falls Municipal Authority is focused and ready for whatever happens. You might even say that we've got our game face on. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's why they asked me to wear a mask. Visit us at bfwater.net. Did you know Fisher's New Brighton Foodland is as close as a click? That's right. If you're watching or listening to this broadcast online, open up a new window and click GroceryStoreNewBrighton.com and start shopping right now. Fill your grocery order from New Brighton Foodland and follow Beaver County High School football all at the same time. What could be better? Fill your shopping cart up without ever leaving the sidelines. Visit GroceryStoreNewBrighton.com. Colder weather, shorter days, and football. It's the season and a great reason to get to GNU's. While you're watching the games, GNU's Body Works and Freedom can be restoring your old ride to its former glory. GNU specializes in the restoration and customization of all makes and models to make your dream ride a reality. Everything from lowering or airbagging your rod or street custom to full custom paintwork and major and minor body and frame mods. GNU's also handles collision and general body repairs. Get a real kick out of driving again and get to GNU's Body Works, 8th Street in Freedom. When you're looking for the Valley's Best Eye Care, look to Gazzetti Optometric Services, 212 State Avenue in Beaver. Dr. John Gazzetti has over 38 years of patient care experience and specializes in primary care optometry and contact lenses. He and his staff offer quality eye care, contact lens fittings, cataract glaucoma and dry eye management, laser vision correction, and sports and sun eyewear. For your best vision, make the best decision. Call Gazzetti Optometric Services at 724-774-7559. Are you in high school and thinking about your future or know someone who is? Consider Geneva College. Geneva is a Christian college that prepares students for meaningful service and their life's work. Geneva has over 145 majors and programs, 18 varsity sports, 100 study abroad programs, and lots of club activities. And Beaver County Scholarships help to make a Geneva education affordable. Learn more by visiting Geneva.edu. That's Geneva.edu. And we return to the coach's quarter here in the studio on 7th Avenue, Beaver Falls. Not a long trip for our guest coach, Nick Nardone, of the undefeated and number one ranked team in the WPIL in 2A. Nick, uh, you're an Elwood City grad. That's who you had last week. Mm -hmm. Just another game on the schedule, or, or, or is it a, a school? It, it, this, it's a it's school that has struggled recently. Mm-hmm. And Joe Lamenza, uh, who was at Blackhawk and now at Elwood, trying to get things turned yeah. around. Very encouraging performance, six nothing against New Brighton, and uh, I, I know things are gonna are gonna improve there Absolutely. under under his direction. But uh, the emotional value yeah. of it. I mean, going up against your alma mater. Does that uh, does does that bring? Uh, what kind of a feeling is that going up against EC? It's when you go back and you see the familiar faces, that's kind of the thing that gets me. Like, go back and their athletic director is Kurt Augustinelli, who was my high school coach. He was the one that brought me to Beaver Falls because at the time he was running the defense for Ryan whenever I first got into coaching. So, seeing guys like him and some of the, the coaches that were involved on his staff still around, um, it's good to see those guys. and. Uh, you miss you miss that for sure. Um, but other than that, you just I mean you got to treat it like any other game. You can't get too emotional, get too wound up. Um, but um, it is like I said, good to go back and see those familiar faces for sure. And Joe's doing a good job. I mean, like you said, he's uh, it'll take him a little time to get things turned around, but I'm sure he will. 
should have asked Kurt, though, what's up? You're supposed to schedule a cupcake yeah, on homecoming. Yeah, yeah. He scheduled the Tigers. <laughs> well, that's what everybody seems to try to be getting their homecomings in early anymore. Yeah. I mean, we're doing homecoming and senior night just so we can make sure we get everything in. Yeah. Because, you, you know, I mean, that week to week, you never know what's going to happen. You just heard the Steelers cancel it or bump their game. <laughs> Because because uh, of COVID in right. Nashville or whatever, so it's Elwood crazy. City had a thousand people in the stadium last mm -hmm. week, uh, so they gave you guys some tickets. Yes. I'm assuming. Yeah. Now, what is your plan for the game against New Brighton? We're doing the same thing. We're okay. gonna. Uh, I think our numbers lower. It's more like 500 total. Um, we had to do some wheeling and dealing with Geneva College, but we got mm -hmm. 500 people coming. And Mr. Carbone, our athletic director, basically decided to to give both teams tickets. Uh, all uh, all athletes, band members, and cheerleaders from both sides will be able to have their parents at the game, and I think maybe one or two extra tickets uh, for other family members to come. But they're trying to keep it strictly family, right. just to make sure the parents are at the games and get to be there and watch the kids. I guess when you talk about Beaver Falls, I mean, I mean both sides of the ball, you've done well, but I mean the headliners. I guess you have to start with Josh Huff. He's been like a three-year starter. He's verbally committed to Syracuse. But it's not just the Josh Huff show on mm -hmm. Friday night. You got Shalik Livingston. Mm -hmm. You have Tyler Jones. I read in the, uh, in the in the paper last week that I was looking at their yards per carry <laughs> average. Just when I first looked at them, I thought, oh, maybe they may, maybe they maybe there was some wideouts catching real long passes and that escalate. No, these are running backs. I mean, they're four or five <laughs> carries. I mean, no one can accuse you of overworking <laughs> anybody. <laughs> but there's only one football. How, how do these guys handle that? They they do well. I mean, you got to give them a lot of credit. They're they're, they're an unselfish group, and especially those three guys. I mean, it's all it's their senior year. Obviously, your senior year, you want to have a big year, a great year, and and get those stats up. You're looking at colleges, hopefully, to recruit you, but they've been an unselfish bunch, especially, like I said, those three, because we have, especially against Elwood, we tried to throw the ball and run some jets, get our wide receivers a ball also. I mean, so you could, you'd expect kids to, if they only touch the ball four times, to be disappointed, but I mean, between Josh Shalik and Tyler, they're they're humble kids, and and in the end, they want to just win the game, and and they were happy that those other guys got their opportunities. But the one kind of common denominator I have to say I can't let it go is, uh, I mean, between all three of them, whoever touched the ball, they pretty much scored or got a big run every time, and. The only common denominator there is the line. I mean, right. There were holes. Mm -hmm. There were gaping holes for those guys to run through. Those guys up front have really done a nice job for those three behind. Let's signal sure. those guys out, Nick. Who are the guys up front paving the way? Um, so our starting center is Connor Pellucci. He's a sophomore. Um, at guard, we have Mitch Myers, who's a senior. And uh, Tracy Pugh and Anthony Kowser kind of share time at the other guard. And then our tackles are Nate Harris, who's a senior, and Kamari Matthews, who's a freshman. Um, and he kind of splits some time with uh, Tracy Pugh, kind of rotates between that guard and tackle position. And then Tyler Kane plays tight end, who is a junior. So we got a nice mix. I mean, we got some seniors, got some underclassmen, yeah. and they've, they're they meshing pretty well up front. You have a lot of depth up front, too, don't you, Nick? From what I understand, yeah. talking to Nate Glass, you're a yeah. D-line coach, you can you can four in, four out with your offensive line. Your second union, unit is getting a lot of playing time, too, Absolutely. with the, uh, with the uh, domination of your scores. Uh, what's it like to add that kind of depth up front? I I mean, it, it goes a long way, especially when you're you're trying to build a program for sure. I mean, because like I said, you got kids now where you got a mix. I got a few seniors, few juniors, few sophomores, and like I said, a couple freshmen that are getting time. So it helps you in future years when those guys just take another year. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. progress another year, but they already have that experience. And I think that's why these guys right now are doing so well. Because Mitch and Nate started last year, started the year before. Anthony got some time last year. So those guys that are full-time starters now were getting time last year like these young guys are getting time so we kind of get them as much experience as we can so when one senior graduates another kid with experience steps right into that spot and it's really helped us out let's talk about your quarterback I mean when you have three running backs mm -hmm. the quality that you do uh, you use them I mean you're smart enough to figure that yeah. out Nick and you've <laughs> and, and you've done a great job you and your staff for getting them the carries that they do but if you have to go to the air, any concerns there? Absolutely not. No, yeah, we have a lot of confidence in Jaron. He, uh, I mean, you guys remember Dalen years ago. This is his younger brother, Jaron, and Brickner. La yeah, Brickner. And last year, I mean, he, as a freshman, kind of towards the end of the season, he started a few games. So he's another one of those kids that had experience coming into the year. 
And um, uh, with that experience, you can just see how he's kind of grown this year. He has more confidence in himself. He has more confidence in the offense. Um, and a lot of that stuff with those running games, I mean, we, we put some pressure on Jaron. He's not just throwing the ball. He's at the line, and he's looking at defenses, and he's making audibles and checks when he needs to. Um, and, and he, like I said, as a sophomore, that's pretty impressive because you usually got a kid that's a junior, senior that really can understand a defense and know where we want to run the ball. But we give, we give him that ability, and we have the confidence in him that he's going to put us in the right play depending on what the defense is giving him. So he's doing a great job. He's doing a great to, job. to have a program like you guys have so successful, Successful and, and, and you, the way you've really turned around in the four years, the first year was tough, yeah. obviously. You had a lot of great losses from that championship team, but you've built this program back up to the, to the standards, I, I guess you could say. Yeah. Talk a little bit about your staff, Nick. You can't do it by yourself. You're only, you're only as good as the guys that work under you. Talk a little bit about your coaching staff and how much they've helped you. And that's what I was kind of telling you guys before. I mean, we are blessed. I'm blessed to have a staff that I have. I mean, with the experience on our staff, guys that have played in high school, played in college, and like I said, I mean, we got a couple that played some NFL years, so uh, starting our skill coaches, Dwight Collins, who everybody knows Coach Dwight, uh, John Atkinson, Jake Wickline, Mike Nypover, and Brandon Rue uh, help our skill positions. And actually, we picked up Admir Carter, I almost forgot, uh, joined the staff this year. So all guys that have played well, college, suit those guys college ball. Yeah. <laughs> and then our line coaches, you got Bruce Davidson, who's been around forever. I mean, loves the game, loves the community, and really has a mind for the game. Nate Glasser, who is, again, a guy that played college football, played for center. Um, B.J. McBride came back this year, who has some NFL experience and played at UConn. And then Jim Mooney, um, who this is a fun week for him. He's a new Brighton, new Brighton guy, guy. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, played at Cal, and we got him to join the staff a couple years ago. So, I mean, uh, and then my dad here and there, he kind of stepped away a little bit this year, but he helps out with the kickers now and uh, helps us with some special teams. So, I mean, top to bottom, like I said, we have such a great staff, and I'm truly blessed to have these guys. I mean, it's, it's one of the best staffs I've been around for sure. Let's talk about your opponent, New Brighton. We know they're three and zero, but uh, w what impresses you about the Lions? Well, they they're one of those teams that you, they make you prepare for everything. They got a good running game, like I said. They got two big backs that can run the football and a good line in front of them. Um, but they have weapons. They got some wideouts that can go get the ball, mm -hmm. um, and they got two two I see sometimes three different quarterbacks back there, whether they're in wildcat or. And uh, they're a team that, that you have to prepare for all elements of the game because if you think you're going to stop the run, then they're going to throw it on you. You think you're going to stop the pass, they're going to run the ball. So they, they force us to prepare for everything. And on defense, they're aggressive. They're going to come after you. They're going to give you formations and fronts and, and, and run twists and games. And, and like I said, if you don't prepare mentally especially to understand what you're getting, they're going to give you fits for sure. You, Nick. This game obviously is big for both of you, but in your case, a victory, that doesn't mean that you're, you've got your ticket to the playoffs yeah. by any means. There's a lot more football to go. Absolutely. But you've already beaten Laurel, and if you would beat New Brighton, the only other team that really is over 500 and a, and a legitimate team, we, Tom and I saw them last week, the Shannon. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're solid. And the, the, but that would be the last game of the year. This game, uh, it would be very difficult to see you not getting in as one of the two teams, being that you've already would have you beat Laurel, a team that could, who knows, still make the playoffs, yeah, yeah. and New Brighton's right there. Now, New Brighton might not be able to assume anything because they still have games coming up with Laurel next week, and that'll be a Beaver County radio broadcast, yeah, yeah. and then they have to go to on the road in the Shanning. So this is... Obviously, if you can find a way to get it done on Friday night, um, it's not on. I, I don't want to say easy street because yeah. you're a coach and you're yeah. going to take every game seriously. Every game, but a it would put game. you at least in the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah, and that's. I mean, like I just said, every game in our minds a playoff game, especially with the way the playoffs have changed. And like you guys have mentioned, two teams only making it. So, but we try to tell our kids. I mean, we're not really preparing for New Brighton or preparing for Laurel. We're preparing for for playoff caliber football because the season's short, and you're before you blink, it's going to be the playoffs. So we have to continue to improve and progress every week and get better and if we can do that and just focus on what we do and how we progress and improve our game I think we'll be okay we're gonna take a time out Tom will be the next one to question head coach Nick Dardone and a little bit later uh, maybe in our final segment we're gonna have Zach hours 
our CCBC Player of the Game in Week 1 when Blackhawk defeated Beaver. We'll be talking to Zach as well. He has a big game coming up this week against Short Tears Valley uh, in the Parkway Conference. We're going to take this time out. We'll be back with Coach Nardone after this break on Beaver County Radio. Have your fall plans changed? There's still time to register at Community College of Beaver County. Choose from CCBC's 10 or 7 week mini masters to make a change one class at a time. Session starts September the 28th and October the 19th. Take your courses on campus or online and earn credits towards a college degree. Call 724-480-2222 or go to ccbc.edu slash fall now to move forward. Start small, achieve big at CCBC. It's where you belong. In the old days, people would tune in to the morning show to hear WBVP and WNBA announcers read the school lunch menus. The school lunch menu for today includes a toasted cheese sandwich, green beans, jello cup, and white or chocolate milk. Today, parents and kids still need to plan for lunchtime just the same, but now many times the school cafeteria is at home in front of a computer, and the lunch lady is a delivery driver from Ambridge Italian Villa. This year, add a course or two in Greek and Italian, as in Beaver County's best Greek gyros and Italian pasta selections from Ambridge Italian Villa. Remember, the learning might be online, but lunch still needs to be on a plate. Order lunch, dinner, or even large event catering by visiting AmbridgeItalianVilla.com or Ambridge Italian Villa on Dust Avenue for takeout or dine-in service. It's the family tradition with the taste sensation. Ambridge Italian Villa Beaver County High School football has always been known as the best high school football around, and this year everybody around the world will get a peek at the action as Beaver County Radio will have a live online video stream for all the games aired on WBVP and 99.3 FM. That's right, you might not be allowed to go to the game in person, but you can watch the WBVP Game of the Week on the WBVP-WNBA Facebook page, accompanied by -by play-by-play from Hall of Fame broadcasters Bob Bartman and Tom Hayes, along with Jason Colangelo and Bruce Fry. The Little Brown Jug is on the line on WBVP Friday night as Beaver Falls hosts New Brighton, while the Titans of the Big 7 duel it out on WNBA as Rochester takes on Olsh. Pre-game for both contests begins at 6.30 with kickoff at 7. Then on Saturday, Western Beaver hosts Seat LaSalle in a Three Rivers Conference showdown at 12.30 with a noon pre-game. High school football coverage is brought to you in part by the law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly & George, Bowser, Hyundai & Chevrolet, and the Beaver Falls Municipal Authority, among others, right here on Beaver County Radio. Lots of things have changed this year, but taking care of your car isn't one of them. Junction Auto Repair reminds you, it's time to schedule your winter weather check. Brakes, tires, batteries, wiper blades, everything needs to be ready for winter's worst. Junction Auto has years of experience in general maintenance and makes solving your car's problems their priority. Stop in today at 425 Constitution Boulevard in New Brighton or call for an appointment at 724-775-2400. Keeping your car in great shape is one game you can always win at Junction Auto. For generations, Beaver Falls has had tremendous pride in their teams. After all, the saying, once a Tiger, always a Tiger, was based on a deep conviction and commitment towards excellence in the classroom and on the field. Along that line, the Beaver Falls Athletic Department invites you to be a part of the Tiger tradition by watching this week's football game live video stream on the Big Beaver Falls High School or Beaver County Radio Facebook pages. Thanks for your support from the Beaver Falls Athletic Department. Returning with Coach Nick Nardone of the Beaver Falls Fighting Tigers. And again, thanks to Pizza Joe's for providing the pizza. Everyone goes to Pizza Joe's. Thanks, guys. Coach Nardone, um, seems to me, and I know there's a lot of football left, but when you took over the job and Tom noted that you lost so many great players from the 16 team that won the state championship, 
seems like you've been building for this year. You 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 got you got you, you got good seniors led by Josh Huff and Livingston and Brickner and um, the uh, and Tyler Jones and a, and a number of offensive defensive linemen. Um, the news that came out last week when the when the PIAA said that they're going to have state playoffs. And I know maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of <laughs> no, myself, boy. but but at least now you know, at least you know that there are going to be WPIL playoffs and there're going to be state playoffs and and you at least have the opportunity to chase your dream. Unless something really happens with the COVID situation, I know things are subject to change. Yeah. But this was probably a similar year to when you were on Ryan Matsuk's staff and he was building for that season and it came to fruition. You at least are in a position talent-wise where you're probably at least in the same neighborhood as that team four years ago. And hopefully you'll get a chance, mm -hmm. the opportunity to realize your ultimate goals. Yeah, I mean, that's all we really want is the opportunity. I mean, uh, my one assistant coach, Jake Wickland, tells me every week, just let's just get to Friday. Just make sure we get to Friday and yeah. we're on the field and we're playing a game. And you really have to look at it that way. Yeah, you could look ahead and be happy that there might be state playoffs or there are state playoffs, but we just want to get to every Friday and just make sure that we're playing. Um, you see what happens. Some of these schools have already had to cancel games. We're lucky enough to have got to play all three mm -hmm. of our games scheduled, and, and we just hope, knock on wood, pray to God that we can play this week and in future weeks and, and, and keep that going because it's, it's scary and it's, it's, it'll be sad for these kids and, like you said, these seniors that have been working so hard yeah. to have something taken away from them. So I just hope that, that we can get there for sure. Nick, it's it's always important to play with emotion, but but sometimes you know you're coaching high school athletes. I mean, they're still they have a lot of maturity left mm -hmm. to, to achieve. How do you keep your team from getting too high for New Brighton on Friday night? Is that a concern that uh, you know your kids are going to be too emotional at the beginning of this game? Well, I know they're going to be emotional. Yeah, uh, especially those seniors. I mean. The last time they got an opportunity to play New Brighton in a real game was the year we lost their freshman year, um, and, and they've been dying for this game. Uh, when we found out we were scrimmaging them the last two years, they wanted to know if the jug came with, with yeah, scrimmages, the scrimmage. and we had to break it to them that, <laughs> no, you have to play an actual game oh, okay. to, to get the jug. So uh, the fact that we finally got them back on the schedule, they're excited. Um, and I want them to be excited. I want them to play yeah. emotional. Like you said, football is an emotional game, and I want them to play uh, play with emotion. But but we teach them and we talk to them about, about keeping their emotion in check and, and playing with that, having that switch, knowing when to turn it on and knowing when to turn it off uh, and they're mature I mean especially these seniors they've been on the field for three years now they know when to get up and they know when it's time to kind of to kind of chill a little bit and take things back and and I have confidence in them that they'll keep the rest of the team in check and and just play the game the way it's supposed to be played from whistle to whistle Nick you got the Beaver Falls job at a young age tell me if I'm within a year 28 Seven, twenty-seven. You were twenty-seven mm -hmm. when you got the head job, sort of like Ryan Matsuk when he was <laughs> hired about a decade or so sooner. Yeah. Um, and you and you win one game the first year. Were the pe and, and people in Beaver Falls that it's like this all over Beaver County? They want to win, and Absolutely. and they expect nothing less. Yeah. Did they show patience? Did they seem to know that hey, this is going to be? kind of a tough year because so many graduated losses or did you at all during this process ever doubt yourself ever think well maybe the job maybe I'm too young for this I mean did you ever have any second doubts during that first season that was a trying one no the town was great I never had I mean the school board the administration they were behind me 100 percent and they knew I mean everybody knew like you said going into that year that we were starting over and um, it didn't help that during the year we lost one or two kids the season ending injuries so um, we had a lot go on. It was a tumultuous year for sure, but uh, never felt pressure from parents, from administrators, from school board members. They, they always supported us uh, throughout that time. I put pressure on myself, but that's just kind of the nature of me. I want to win. I, I, uh, I don't get into coaching to, to lose for sure. So that was tough. It was trying for me just dealing with, because I'd never been through a season like that. Um, but um, 
it really taught us as a coaching staff and, and taught these kids especially that I mean, you, you got to work. You got to work and you got to put the work in. And from that point, I always go back to that senior group the next year, the Devin Littles, the Allman Catrills, the Dalen Brickners. Uh, they made it a point. They came to me that December and they were ready to work then. They didn't want to wait till February to Good. start their workouts. They came to me and they were ready to go. They wanted to change things. And, and a testament goes to them because they helped really turn this program around and set the model. And these kids right. like Josh and Tyler followed their kind of footsteps and, and they've kept that going. So it's a testament to the kids for sure and the way they, they went about handling that situation and, and turning it around for sure. Nick, we talked about your coaching staff and, and one guy that you have to have in your corner is the athletic director. Mm -hmm. Jim Carbone's one of the best in the business. Uh, what does it mean to have an AD like Jim to help you uh, navigate these waters as a head football coach? I mean, I mean, you can't, you can't thank and, and appreciate Jimmy enough for the different things he does. I mean, day in and day out, he's running around, he's scrambling, getting things set up uh, with the COVID situation. He's setting up practices, a change in schedule so junior high can play a game today, but make sure we still get our practice in, make sure the fields are in the shape that they need to be in. I mean, it's, it's a blessing because I know a lot of times you have some athletic directors that, that have to play that administrator role, mm -hmm. make sure they're, they're doing the administration part, but Jimmy doesn't forget about the, the athletics and he makes sure he takes, not just me, but all of our athletic programs, right. he takes care of us. He definitely does. And I got to throw in Chris Possett, who's the head of our uh, maintenance crew, yeah. just getting the fields ready and the different things that he's done for us with cleaning the locker rooms and all this stuff that we have to do now you know what I mean? Because of COVID, just making sure our kids are healthy and safe, but also letting us use the facilities to, to make it feel as normal or as regular of a season as possible. So Let's not forget the wife and kids at home, too. Oh, you, yeah. you got that support you need oh, on the home man. front, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my wife, she's probably, she, she asked me what station it was on because she was going to try to let the kids <laughs> listen to Daddy on the radio. But, yeah, they're home right now. i got to get home in about 10 minutes and put them to bed. Um, <laughs> but uh, she's been at every game. She finds a way to get to the game find somebody to watch the kids and she's uh, she's definitely this team's biggest fan and I got a text I think it was the Laurel game that I'm making things too nerve-wracking for her. <laughs> so I uh, we got to make sure we handle handle New Brighton or I'll get yelled at after there you the go. game for sure. Nick do you have any players who played during the last basketball season that are playing football this fall? Yeah, Shalik was on the oh, team. That's right. Um, I'm trying to remember who else. I know Shalik was, but I think I think that's it. Okay, so let's take Shalik Livingston. Okay, they get on a nice run in basketball, yeah. Yeah. and then the season's cut, cut short, short because of the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. And even though Beaver Falls might have been looked upon as a footnote going in the state playoffs. They, they win a couple games. In fact, that was the last game that was on this very rate, these very yeah. radio stations yeah. before uh, the COVID situation hit. I'm sure there had been things going through Shalik's mind saying, okay, my basketball team had, had the season cut short. And then you're going into football, mm -hmm. and I'm sure every night he's got to be crossing his finger saying, please let this continue. Don't cut short mm -hmm. another year because you never know. Uh, I mean, obviously the situation that we're under uh, nationally, uh, yeah. I mean, 200,000 or so Americans who have died through this. So obviously football at any level becomes secondary. Absolutely. But but for somebody like a Shalik Livingston, that's got to mean a lot. I, I hope he doesn't have to go through any shortage of, of season like he did in basketball. Yeah, and that's why I said that's why we're praying every week that we can just get to Friday because it's not because because I want to coach or I feel like I need to be out there and coach. It's because these kids deserve it. I mean, um, when you got a group like this and just any group, any senior in any high school around the Whippy or anywhere in the state. I mean, this is their last opportunity. I mean, you love a game f like football. I mean, I fell in love with the game of football, and if I had it taken away from me, especially my senior year, the the lifelong of shoulda, coulda, wouldas would drive me insane. Yeah. And I don't want to have that that to happen to these kids. They they don't they don't deserve that because of the hard work and effort. They deserve an opportunity to play every week. And like you said, we we want to take we have to take it seriously. We wa have to make sure that we have everybody's health. Um, as our number one priority, but these kids 
got to be right up there with that. And they got to mm-hmm. be right. I mean, if it, they're a second, they're a very short second to, to that because they need it. They deserve it, and, and they've worked for it. And they, they, I just hope that we can continue on the path we're on. Nick, we'll let you get home All to right. the family, yeah, nice. and uh, we we always appreciate the visit. Best of luck to you. We'll have the game Friday night, not only on Beaver County Radio, but like tonight, Facebook Live, and, uh, and I think it's going to be a pretty picture. Uh, two 3-0 and teams, yeah. great rivalry, the little brown jug. It doesn't get better yeah. than that. That's what Beaver <laughs> County football is all about, and you're a big part of it. We're excited. We're excited. I think it's going to be a great game. Nick, best of luck all to right, you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Nick Nardone, the head Thanks. coach of the Beaver Falls Fighting Tigers, will take our final time out, stepping in a fine young football player in the same zip code, 15010. Zach Hours is going to be joining us after this break here on Beaver County Radio. In the old days, people would tune into the morning show to hear WBVP and WNBA announcers read the school lunch menus. The school lunch menu for today includes a toasted cheese sandwich, green beans, jello cup, and white or chocolate milk. Today, parents and kids still need to plan for lunchtime just the same, but now many times the school cafeteria is at home in front of a computer, and the lunch lady is a delivery driver from Ambridge Italian Villa. This year, add a course or two in Greek and Italian, as in Beaver County's best Greek gyros and Italian pasta selections from Ambridge Italian Villa. Remember, the learning might be online, but lunch still needs to be on a plate. Order lunch, dinner, or even large event catering by visiting AmbridgeItalianVilla.com or Ambridge Italian Villa on Dust Avenue for takeout or dine-in service. It's the family tradition with the taste sensation. Ambridge Italian Villa did you know Fisher's New Brighton Foodland is as close as a click? That's right. If you're watching or listening to this broadcast online, open up a new window and click GroceryStoreNewBrighton.com and start shopping right now. Fill your grocery order from New Brighton Foodland and follow Beaver County High School football all at the same time. What could be better? Fill your shopping cart up without ever leaving the sidelines. Visit GroceryStoreNewBrighton.com. Colder weather, shorter days, and football. It's the season and a great reason to get to GNU's. While you're watching the games, GNU's Body Works and Freedom can be restoring your old ride to its former glory. GNU specializes in the restoration and customization of all makes and models to make your dream ride a reality. Everything from lowering or airbagging your rod or street custom to full custom paintwork and major and minor body and frame mods. GNU's also handles collision and general body repairs. Get a real kick out of driving again and get to GNU's Body Works, 8th Street in Freedom. When you're looking for the Valley's best eye care, look to Gazzetti Optometric Services, 212 State Avenue in Beaver. Dr. John Gazzetti has over 38 years of patient care experience and specializes in primary care optometry and contact lenses. He and his staff offer quality eye care, contact lens fittings, cataract glaucoma and dry eye management, laser vision correction, and sports or know someone who is, consider Geneva College. Geneva is a Christian college that prepares students for meaningful service and their life's work. Geneva has over 145 majors and programs, 18 varsity sports, 100 study abroad programs, and lots of club activities. And Beaver County scholarships help to make a Geneva education affordable. Learn more by visiting Geneva.edu. That's Geneva.edu. For generations, Beaver Falls has had tremendous pride in their teams. After all, the saying, once a Tiger, always a Tiger, was based on a deep conviction and commitment towards excellence in the classroom and on the field. Along that line, the Beaver Falls Athletic Department invites you to be a part of the Tiger tradition by watching this week's football game live video stream on the Big Beaver Falls High School or Beaver County Radio Facebook pages. Thanks for your support from the Beaver Falls Athletic Department. Our final segment here of the Coach's Quarter on this Wednesday night in the studio. And now we're being joined by 
our first community college of Beaver County player of the game who's made the visit to the studio. We hope to have more as the season continues. But Zach Hours in week one against the Beaver Bobcats had two interceptions and the Blackhawk Cougars were victorious. Only a sophomore. Usually, Tom, sophomores have to kind of pay their dues. They don't become yeah, CC, B, B, BC players of the game that easily, but Zach didn't waste any time. Uh, he got his career off to a rocking start, and here he is in the studio. But uh, he he deserved it. Jason Colangelo, who broadcasted the game with me that night, we always have a discussion, okay, who should get it, who should not. Or anybody could get him, but I mean, but he said, "Hey, two interceptions! Come on, Bob, we got to go with Zach Ours." I said, "I I defer to you, Jason." Good and, choice. And uh, Zach, let's go back to that Beaver game when you when you talk about the two picks in the secondary. Were they? Uh, There's a situation Bob mentioned. You're only in tenth grade. Uh, Position, you have to know where you're at on the football field, even when you make the plays. Uh, can you think back about that game and how you came up with those two picks? Was it a good read on your part? And uh, you know, tell us how that how that felt to come up with those two interceptions. Yeah, I was just I was just doing my job. My coaches taught me. I was in the right position at the right time. And first one, it was a little rough because their starting quarterback, Austin. No, um, Hansen got hurt, right. and so they had their backup quarterback in, but I just did my job, and I ended up getting the picks, and I was, it was great feeling after with the team. Well, not only was it a great team win, I mean, individually, I mean, you, you really contributed, and you kind of, you had to know, I mean, being that they switched that last game to the week three, it, it kind of uh, w w yeah. did, was it sort of like a surprise, or maybe maybe you weren't uh, you had to be more ready than you were. I mean, usually you get a couple non-conference games, but the way with the COVID situation, right out of the gate, you had to play against Beaver, a team you probably figured that hey, we got to win this game if we're gonna if we're gonna be at least in contention for one of those playoff spots. Yeah, we had to. We knew we had to come out and. Beaver's a good team. We knew we had to come out and fight because it was a first conference game, and every conference game matters since we have them short. And we just knew we had to fight for the win, give it a good team. Zach, since you're our first player down here for the Coach's Corner this year, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you from a player and a student's perspective, uh, how have you handled this COVID situation? We've talked to coaches, Bob and I, for four weeks, but we haven't talked to a student athlete yet. Uh, what were your thoughts all summer long going through conditioning and uh, were you really worried about going back to school and, and even having a football season? Uh, what was the process for you, for you guys and your teammates? Yeah, it's been tough, but we just, I've just been worried about getting the season in, getting as much as we can to play, and we've ended up playing, which is good. And school, we're not back yet. We're still online, and okay. so I can't wait to get back to school because it just helps. And right. it's just great to be back in football and not that it didn't get canceled and we get to play. Zach, who'd you bring with you tonight? Let's let's introduce. I brought my mom. Your mom's here, the boss. Okay, Julie. You're make sure. Yeah. Is she your number one fan? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. No question. I'm sure. All right, Zach. Um, okay, so you're one and zero in the conference. I mean, it's hard to believe this this late in the year. We're yeah. we're, we're we're a day away from being yeah. in October, and you've had one conference game. But that's the that's the mm -hmm. hand that we've been dealt. You played Central Valley, a team that could win win it all, yeah. And, and an Ambridge team that has struggled. It used to be in the same conference as you, so you did get your two non-conference games. But this one, maybe sort of unexpected. Short Tears Valley hasn't exactly been on the radar in recent years, but they are now. They're undefeated. They're ranked in the uh, top five in the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. You have an opportunity Friday night, um, not to say that if you don't come out on the, the the right end of the scoreboard that it's over, but this is this is huge because Short Tears Valley is one of those teams that probably will be there in the end. But if you can take care of business uh, in the Bridgeville area Friday night, boy, that's going to be a big leg up for you to go two and zero in the conference. Yeah, we knew they were they're going to be a 
tough game because they came down from 5A and right. they haven't they weren't doing great in 5A and they're coming down to 4A to, and they're hunting they want they want to win and they are winning now and they're just trying to do as best as they can and we're gonna play them as great as we can because we know they're a good team and it's a big game because it's our second conference game and we just have to win if we want to make playoffs. I had a broadcast of your Central Valley game and uh, Central Valley, as Bob said, very good, great team in AAA, number one in the state. And of course, you guys had some injuries. You did not have Vince Criteria, your great fullback linebacker. Uh, he wasn't able to go at all against Central Valley. I'm not, I don't think he played last week. Uh, how are you guys health-wise going in the Char Valley game and will you be getting Vince back for this one? Yeah, we're looking good. Everyone's healthy. We got Vince back. Everyone's good. Team's well, that's a key. Good. Yeah. Zach, I, I guess you play a little bit of basketball. I'm, uh, I'm sure Brooks Rohrbach is, uh, has you in the back of his mind. Uh, I, I get, could, could you be seeing a lot of the hardwood like you are on the gridiron in, in only 10th grade? Yeah. I'm, well, I'm just going to go out there and do my best on basketball season two, try to get as much playing time as I can. But... We'll see when we get there. You know, you kids at Blackhawk are blessed. Uh, you know, Zach Hayward, your football coach, Brooks Rohrbach, your basketball coach, two young guys that had stellar athletic careers. Uh, you guys have to look up to them as coaches. Even though they're young guys, I would imagine that, that Zach and Brooks uh, uh, command attention, don't they? Yeah, they're great guys. They, they coach, and they're just great, great guys outside of sports, and yeah. they're both good guys. Zach, um, now you're playing basically just defense right now. Uh, is that true, or, or, or are you getting a, a few looks offensively? Yeah, I'm getting some looks offensively. I'm rotating in with the starting running back, Josh Hathaway. We're getting some. I'm getting some reps in there too. And as far as you got to the playoffs last year. Did you get on the field as a freshman last year when, uh, when you went to the postseason? Yeah, I was on kickoff return and kickoff, and I got some reps at defense on safety, but not much. But Well, for your sake, let's hope there's not a, a Thomas Jefferson. If you yeah. get that playoff opportunity, they were they were a special team like Central yeah. Valley is right now. No, they still are. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they, they they're yeah. still pretty darn good. Yeah, they they're, defeated they're, Bell Vernon yeah. forty one to twenty forty two to twenty one last week. Zach, we want to congratulate <laughs> you again, uh, our CCBC player of the game. Uh, good luck tomorrow night. Now next week, now we have four teams that are three and zero right now. Next week, we have Chartiers Valley at Aliquippa, which both can be 4-0, but I know you want to spoil the party for us and <laughs> make sure that you pin a loss on the Colts come Friday night. Yeah, we just, we have to win. We have to win most games, as many conference games as we can from here on out because they all matter, and if we can win on Friday night, it's going to be huge for us going out for the rest of the season. Good luck. Thank you. Zach, thanks for coming down. Thank you for having me. All right, buddy. Good luck. Zach Hours, the sophomore, the CCB. What were you doing in 10th grade? grade? You certainly weren't playing varsity football, were you? No. I, yeah, I, me I, either. I was trying to convince <laughs> Coach Pat Tarquini of uh, uh, Beaver to get, the, to get me a few reps. Yeah. But, uh, that, Still couldn't beat out Jeff Hardy. No, 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 not quite. No, but but Zach Hours is a different story, and, and uh, Zach's going to do just well, and um, – Tom, uh, we do we do have two good football games. Yeah, it's going to be Friday. exciting. Yeah, we really we've had we've had some mismatches this year, quite frankly, to be honest. But uh, um, you know, we're just blessed to cover high school football with with everything that we've all been through in 2020. I'm just thankful to get on the air on Friday night and talk about high school football. But yeah, Friday night uh, we couldn't have a better doubleheader. Jason will be joining me at Rochester for Our Lady of Sacred Heart at Rochester and, and you and Frank Sparks will be at uh, Beaver Falls doing Beaver Falls in New Brighton so our listeners can't go wrong. There'll be people flip-flopping yep. back and forth, you know, checking out both broadcasts. And then Saturday you and me get together in industry. You can see our South. old buddy. Yeah. 
Mike Smianic. Mike Smianic, Head Ryan coach of this, Matsuk. Right. No, this is an Aliquippa Beaver Falls revisited. It's Seat LaSalle and Western Beaver. How weird is that? Huh? I know. That, 12 p.m. airtime. I can remember the coach's corner when we would have – there were a couple times we've had Ryan and Mike down at the same time, at least once or twice that I can recall, Yeah. Uh, even though they coached opposite rivals. So that was always fun. And it's going to be great to see them both to get it out on the field at uh, Rich Nita Ball of Football Field on Saturday. Looking forward Forward to it. Love to go out to industry on Saturday afternoon. And Western Beaver still undefeated at 2 and 0. That'll do it for this show. We want to thank again Nick Nordone, uh, the outstanding young football coach of the Beaver Falls Fighting Tigers, and our CCBC player of the game in week one, Zach Hours, the sophomore for the Black Hawk Cougars. We will talk to you Friday night. We have New Brighton at Beaver Falls on WBVP and 99.3 FM and on WMBA, two undefeated teams and Our Lady of the Sacred Heart and Rochester, both airtime at 6.30, followed by the Falcone's Moon Township Ford wrap-up show till 11, and then Don Rebel and his staff will wrap up the entire WPIL from 11 to midnight. That'll do it for us. Thanks again to Pizza Joe's for providing the refreshments tonight. We'll do it again next week, 7 o'clock. Stay tuned then. Here on Beaver County Radio, 1230 WBVP Beaver Falls, 1460 WNBA, Ambridge, Chippewa, and Facebook Live. Good night, everyone.